In the discussion, Marcelo asked a question about the roller coaster example. Actually, it's a more general question about conser conservation of energy. His question was, um, how do we know what point to consider as the initial point, the starting point when you do uh, a calculation? And the answer is that it actually doesn't matter. The reason why it doesn't matter is because of the whole principle of conservation of energy. The idea is that when energy is conserved, if you have, say, a frictionless example like this, the energy, the total mechanical energy, is the same everywhere at all times. So let me remind you of the analysis of this problem, and then we'll see why it doesn't matter what the starting point is. So the way we, the way we tackled this was we said PE initial plus KE initial equals PE final plus KE final. In other words, the total energy in some initial state, at some initial position, equals the total energy at some final position. And when we solved the problem the first time, we considered the initial position to be at the top of the tallest hill of the roller coaster. So gravitational potential energy looks like mgy, and kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And we were asking the first time we did this problem about the speeds. And so when you uh, do a bunch of algebra here, you can find that the final speed equals square root of initial speed squared plus 2g y initial minus y final. And what's, what's interesting here is that final and initial really could be anything. It could be any two points on the system. It doesn't matter. Um, when we solved the problem the first time, we first looked at this position B at the top of the loop as a final position, and the top of the first hill as an initial position, and then we solved it again, looking at, at C as the final position and A as the initial position. But you could really pick any of them to be initial and any of them to be final. The reason why is that the total amount of energy is the same no matter which position on the track you're looking at. That's what conservation of energy means. So let me be really um, uh, precise about that and put in some numbers. Let's imagine that the person plus the roller coaster car together have a mass of 200 kilograms. That means that the total energy, total mechanical energy at point A would be mgya plus one half mva squared which is 200 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 50 meters plus zero because there's no speed at the, at the top of that ramp. When you plug all that in, you get uh, 98,000 joules. What if we find the total energy at point B? M G Y B plus one half M V B squared. Well, two hundred kilograms, nine point eight meters per second squared, thirty-five 
34 meters plus one half 200 kilograms times 17.7 .7 meters per second quantity squared. And guess what? When you type all that in, it gives you the same number. That's what we mean by conservation of mechanical energy. And if you do it at point C at the bottom of the loop, plug in the numbers to gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy, once again, you get the same value. And it doesn't have to be those three points. You could calculate it at any point along this path. And you'd find that the total energy is always the same amount. So when you're doing conservation of energy, that means that both sides of this equation add up to the same number. All this equation is saying in this case is 98,000 equals 98,000. And it's just partitioned differently between potential energy and kinetic energy. At point A, all of that energy, all 98,000 joules is in potential energy. At point C, all 98,000 joules is kinetic energy. And at other points in between, some of it is potential, some of it's kinetic, but the total amount is always constant.